It's back everyone, it's back! It is... It's back, the whiteboard is back, I'm excited, I'm excited. Is that lined up? Is my head perfectly in frame? I reckon it is. It's Multiplier with arms telling you today how to mix vocals, outlying a framework for approaching vocals, how to mix them, process them, and my personal recommendations and all those other such forth things. Step one for mixing and processing vocals. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to use the words mixing and processing vocals interchangeably. It's a four step process. Fix, dash, repair. Step one. Fix or repair the vocal. Now, there are many different ways you can do this. By far the best is using isotope RX. So I'm gonna put, who put that there? RX. By far the best utility, RX45 or whatever they're up to now. Isotope, R, or it might even just be Isotope RX. Yes, Isotope RX is by far the best way to fix or repair a vocal. It can do denoising, de-clipping. It can do spectral repair. So if like a, literally if a bird makes a noise or an airplane goes by, you can remove that. You can basically do anything imaginable. It's complete witchcraft. Isotope RX, that's gonna be the best plugin way to repair or fix a vocal. Other ways that you can use include, I suppose the simplest one, high pass filter. So high pass filter. High pass EQ, there you go. Lots of letters there. High pass EQ or a high pass filter to filter out the low end rumble. That's gonna be by far the simplest of the fix and repair things you can do. Also, uh, just manual clip editing, so audio doing. It's quite hard to, I'm, I'm quite impressed with my writing. Basically getting hands on with the clips, doing little volume automations, doing things like removing mouth noise just by chopping out tiny bits of audio doing just that really, volume automations and removing little bits of audio, normally mouth noise and such, or just errors in the recording. Also, gates, I suppose, you could include. I mean, stuff like gates, you could include in the Isotope RX, but not everyone has Isotope RX. It can be quite expensive, but it's very good. But yes, you can use a gate to basically remove background noise, bleed or, or leak from other instruments in the recording, look up gates. It can be a bit of a crude solution to remove background noise and to repair or fix a bit of audio, but it's something that includes, that is included in pretty much every DAW and it's a standard approach for vocals, processing, mixing. Step one. Step two, we're making progress, we're making progress. Right, step two, I must, must plan so I don't run out of space here. So step two, dynamics, and I'll do a little arrow and then, Oh no, that's an awful one. It's got, it's got character now. Dynamics. Dynamics is a word in music production and it can mean a range of things. It can mean a range of things, but it's basically the difference, loosely speaking, between the loudest point in a sound and the quietest. So if a bit of audio has a big dynamic range, then there'll be a big difference between the loudest sounds and the quietest ones. Whereas if it has a small dynamic range, there'll be only a small difference between the loudest sounds and the quietest. And in the case of vocals, a natural human, in the case of humans, we talk naturally in a very dynamic way. At least when you compare it to say, dance music with a super saw going, or a bass line going bah. So what you need to do is take a real life recording of a vocal, such as this one, which is very dynamic. You can see there's a big difference between the loudest sounds and the quietest. And then you need to use a dynamics shaper, normally a compressor, to decrease this dynamic range to make it look a bit like this. What you'll find is with time, you'll be able to look at a vocal from say a sample pack or a vocal someone sent to you, and you'll know already if it's been compressed or not, if it's got a dynamic range suitable for dance music or if it's just raw. Importantly, somewhere in the processing chain from the vocal being recorded to being in the track, it must be compressed to reduce that dynamic range. Now this could be done by the person making the sample pack or it could be done even in hardware in say a recording studio. So there's a chance it's already been done further down the, further before, backwards in time through the production processing chain. So there's a chance the vocal you're working with doesn't need this stage, but you always must consider it just like the step one, fix and repair. You pretty much always need to fix or repair it unless you're happy leaving in the mistakes for character. So dynamics, compressors. Yeah, compressor, I think that's how you spell it. Compressor, compressors. 
My favourite is called Manic. No, that's not true. I'll, I'll expand that thought into words. Right, cool. So my favourite way to do crude but very effective dynamics processing like this is using a little plugin from JST, which is Joe something or other, Stir something or other, Tones maybe? Anyway, it's a little plugin from JST called Game Reduction Deluxe. And the cool thing about it is it completely flattens out the vocal in a very aggressive modern dance music way with no effort at all. You just literally go doing and put it on. In fact, you don't even need to do doing because it doings by default with the slay button. And then you just basically throw it on your vocal. It's super, super compressed, super loud in your face up front and tear out, which is how most music I listen to tends to sound anyway. So you kind of go doing and it's, it's done. And then you can ease back off on it if you want to, but, it, but it's good because it's not too expensive as a little plugin. And it just does, just does your compression without you having to really fiddle around with the buttons and stuff which can be difficult. As a more, so yeah, I'm gonna recommend these. So that's one solution, JST gain redux. And so that basically means gain reduction deluxe, which I'm really very well. And that's fine though. So gain reduction deluxe is one, my favorite more advanced compressor for doing more interesting compression. It's called Manic Compressor, Manic Comp from Balls Labs. I think it is, that was fantastic. It's basically six compressors in one with uh, just loads of amazingness. So if you're a more advanced user, or you want a more powerful one, uh, go for that. Or anything from Isotope works well as well. An important point here is you don't necessarily even need to know about attack times, ratios, all that sort of stuff. All you need to do is get your hands on a compressor. I mean, even the one built into your DAW will probably have some good presets. And just, and just find an appropriate vocal compression preset. Because if you go to Isotope Alloy or Isotope Ozone or or a manic compressor or whatever compressor you have, there will be a two or three or four vocal processing presets. And at least two of those will sound appropriate for vocals. They'll have approximately the right attack times, release times, and ratios for a human voice. So you just remember, or you don't remember, first of all, figure out, figure out which one kind of works for just generic standard compression, remember it, and then just always throw on your vocal to make it less dynamic. It snowed last night about this much. That was very windy. Right, cool. Step three, uh, I'll explain conceptually. I mean, it will, it will actually make sense. Look, words, it will actually make sense conceptually, the overall structure once I've done, and I'll, talk, I'll, I'll do words anyway, right? So step three is, can't think of a good description for it. Basically, make it sound exciting. So um, just make it sound interesting, exciting, sparkly, sort of pizzazz. Interesting, another word. Adjectives. Make it exciting, there you go. Ah, my knees, my left knee's not even. Ah, make, make it exciting. Now I say exciting, but that could be emotional, interesting, just all round better to suit the vibe and the purpose of your track. So I'm just gonna lump that into exciting, if that's cool. Ah, my knees, ah, yeah, right, right, that knees, bad, bad knees. Uh, you're watching the NHS, can you bump me forward in your queue for new knees? Not even joking. Make it exciting. My rectangles are getting worse. That one's all kind of vibey and chill, casual, but professional. That one's a bit, bit drunk, and then that one's just way worse. Right, anyway, uh, put the lid on that. Don't drop it across my cash. And um, right, make it exciting. You, you can, words. You're basically taking the vocal that you first of all fixed, and then you've made it dynamically appropriate for dance music, or just music in general actually. And then what you're doing now is giving it character and making it exciting, making it exciting. So that could be in the form of EQ to give it a bit of sort of tone and personality. It could be a crazy reverb, it could be a normal reverb, a delay, a bit crusher, literally anything at all. Anything at all, anything at all, anything at all, anything at all. Anything at all. I'm, I'm just gonna write anything at all. Any Effects go nuts. Go crazy. Make it after just repeating that. Make it sound great. Yes, yeah, you, you be you, right? Make it sound great. EQ. Um, distort plugins, etc. You get the idea. It's literally. I'm not exaggerating. Anything at all. Ah, my knees. Ah, that was horrific. Don't focus on those necessarily. Um, 
Actually, they are quite useful. But yeah, I mean, you can use uh, anything at all. In fact, I've got a recommendation for you called Vocal Synth. That is a great way to make a vocal interesting and or exciting. Vocal Synth from Isotope, it's fantastic. Yeah, you can read that. It's a great way, just about, it's a great way to make a vocal interesting and exciting beyond your normal EQs and stuff. I mean, to be honest, just literally go on Plugin Boutique or, no, go on there. This is the stage that you make it sound great. Make it sound great. Go nuts. Four, right, next, next, next. Ow. Right, I, I can do this, don't. Ow. Right, okay, step four, mix in. Oh, look at that. The secret's to go down and then reference a, a good rectangle. I know you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking multiplier. You're doing a video on how to mix or how to do mixing for vocals. How is one of the things you do just the name of the thing you're trying to do? It's like Inception or something. Let me explain. This is the stage where you take the vocal and make it sound good in the context of the actual track. This stage makes it sound good by itself. This stage makes it sound good in the context of the track. I'll say it again. Step three is making it sound great by itself. Step four is making it sound great in the context of the whole track. Normally, the vocal is the most important part of the track. Take any given track and chances are you remember the vocal, you're listening to the vocal. It's the most important part. And therefore, you mix everything else around the vocal. Again, it's really important. One of the biggest mistakes I see when mixing from newer producers, the vocal is almost always the most important part of the track. If it's not the most important, it might sometimes be the equal most important. So there are some situations where maybe the vocal and the synth are equally important, but the vocal will never be less important than something else, ever. And so if the vocal is the most important part of the track, and therefore you're mixing everything else around the vocal, you need to do pretty much nothing at this stage. In other words, the vocal is the most important part of most tracks. So you make it sound as good as possible, which is step three, and then you make sure you don't ruin it at step four, when you then mix it together with the other elements in the track. As I say, sometimes the vocal will be the most important part of a track alongside a synth. So let's say you have a vocal and a synth, and those two things together are the most important bit. Then what you do is you get the vocal to work with the synth, and then you get everything else to work around that. Solo the vocal, solo the synth, make that relationship work, and then build everything else around that. But multiply, but multiply, but multiply. You keep talking about building stuff around other things like slot a synth around a vocal or take a sound effect and put it around a vocal. What are you on about? How do you do that? Let me explain, right? So what you do, Nailed it, right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sit down for this, because I'm quite low. Get low, low with the whistle blow. Songs, culture, right. So, you use a few standard tools. EQ, and also stereo imaging. So, stereo imaging. Stereo imaging, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up for this. Right. Oh, got up, knees didn't hurt too much that time. Brilliant, nailed it. Oh, that breath though. Right, stereo imaging. Stereo imaging is how you have two speakers, a speaker on the left and a speaker on the right. These are my hands, but imagine they're speakers. You have two sources in, of, of, of words, information in your songs, in your music you're making. You have a left channel and you have a right channel. And when you have a left channel and a right channel blasted into your eardrums through headphones or speakers, then what that does is it creates almost like a 3D space in your brain because your brain takes two sources of information like your ears, and then imagines a 3D world. That's what stereo imaging is. It's the construction and manipulation of this 3D space of sound you're imagining. Brilliant panning, unison, stereo filter offset. I'm gonna write it down. Well, lost my pen. Oh, it's on the chair. Right. Uh, ah, my knees again. What's wrong with my knees so much? Right. Uh, this is a part of stereo imaging, but I'm gonna put a, a separate dash here. So. Panning, so pan, unison, stereo filter offset. I can't write that, that's crazy long. Going for it. Stereo filter, offset, the pan control in serum is brilliant. My approach to stereo imaging is try to get it right at the natural stage. These, in my brain at least, the way that my brain works, are natural ways to get stereo width. It sounds natural. Whereas, I'm on this side for the whereas, 
Whereas using tools like Midside EQ and using a stereo imager, even though such as the uh, one in uh, Ozone, for example, even though they're normally pretty amazing, it's always more crude to use a stereo imager or a Midside EQ than using natural stereo imaging things. In other words, in other words, if you want a wide synth sound because you want to put your synth on the sides of the stereo image because maybe your vocal is in the center, it's much better to use unison with a unison number of two than it is to use a stereo imager or a midside EQ to take that synth and make it wide. So yes, you can use midside EQ and you can use the, to be honest, quite amazing stereo imager as part of Ozone to do your stereo imaging, but it's much more crude to do that instead try and do it naturally with panning, unisom, stereo filter offset, and so on. Remember, you can make a sound wide by having a unison number of two. Unison isn't all about super big super saws with a unison number of seven and 15. You can use two. It will sound clean and wide and amazing. Great. Also, more ways you can kind of get work in a more ways you can kind of construct your track kind of piecing it together right kind of related to stereo imaging is reverb i will explain reverb aka verb if you're really cool you just call reverb verb basically just get rid of the re same thing just shorter and more cool Reverb. Reverb places a sound in the back of the mix. Into the distance. It throws the sound into the distance. How does this work in the context of vocals? Let's say your vocal doesn't have much reverb. Let's say for a simpler situation, your vocal has no reverb. Therefore, in the 3D space, space, space imagined, your vocal is close to you. So what you could do is put your pads or your synths in the background, so you take your pads and you take your synths and your sound effects, apply a lot of reverb, throw it into the distance, and therefore your vocals are close to you, your pads and stuff, your synths are in the distance, over there, and that is everything working around each other. Bloody useless. So this is the basic four step structure, which you can use regardless of the type of vocal you're working with, the type of genre, the type of music, the tools you have available. If you apply this structure using your brain, you will do great. It's a logical structure, right? Take your sound, fix it, repair it, then make it less dynamic so you can work with it properly in the context of dance music. And then you make it exciting, so you make it sound as good as possible by itself, and then you mix it in with the rest of the track. There's a bonus though. And to use some magic and sparkles and fun and colors to show you the final step though, which is more of a, it's not really, I mean, this is a logical four step process here, but this additional thing to consider is very, very important. In fact, it's maybe the most important step, depending on how you define most important. And it kind of sits alongside everything, but also separate to everything, but also with everything in some, some sort of mega, sort of brilliant package sort of deal universe. Um, let me write it down. Smooth multiplier, smooth. Creativity slash feel. This is really important. That's why I'm gonna do exciting uh, border. It's going well, it's going well. Purple. I've got purple on me. Useless. Creativity slash feel. I'm gonna underline it as well. And also do a smiley face, because that's also important. Right, let me explain. Well, I've got well that time. Knees, you're doing well. Right. Creativity slash feel. The idea behind me writing that down, creativity slash feel, is while this is a very effective structure, it's a very effective way to approach vocals, a huge part of making music and also a huge part of mixing and engineering and processing is, is, is just how you feel. And creativity and sort of vibe, emotion, energy, excitement, aggression. Remember, we are writing music. We are writing music that makes us feel something, whether that, yeah, or that, yeah, or whether that's, yeah, or whether that's all sorts of yes. If you feel like doing something crazy, that doesn't really make sense in this context. 
do it. I'm going to give you an example. This stage of dynamics you would properly do with a compressor. What you could do is use a distortion effect. Sometimes you might not want to fix a vocal. Whoa! Imperfections can give something character and make it sound real. If you take all the imperfections out of a vocal, it can sometimes sound a bit too perfect, a bit too polished, and a bit too sort of good, if you know what I mean. Also, breaking the rules, breaking the rules. What could you do to break the rules using creativity and feel and so on? Traditionally, you wouldn't want to send all your instruments or even the entire track through a reverb. What you're supposed to do is pick one or two of the most important things, or not the most important, you pick one or two things you want with a big reverb, you place those into a reverb, and then you leave everything else dry. But what you could do, what you could do, what you could do, that didn't work at all as a surprise, what you could do is put a reverb on the master channel. It's crazy, people used to do it a little bit in the olden days, they pretty much never do it now, but you could do to be creative, just as an idea. It's not technically correct, as much as technically as a thing in dance music. So yes, you shouldn't really, in normal situations, apply, oh, the sun's coming out. You shouldn't normally apply reverb on the master channel to everything, especially not really wet, but you never know. It could sound cool, it could sound creative if you did so. That would be an example that I don't necessarily recommend, but you could do it, breaking the rules, in the spirit of making interesting, good, and exciting music. Remember, Remember, we are making music. We are making music, not perfectly engineered dance tracks. There's a difference. That's it, people. That is a look at how to mix vocals, processing vocals, all the same sort of thing. How to approach taking a vocal and doing stuff with it. With multiplier. Bumped into it with multiplier. Multiplier with arms and a head. I will catch you guys. On the flippity 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 Bow! Bumped into that. Stupid. Need a pen. Now what colour do I choose today? Two colours. Green and black. Right. Door open. Door closed. Door. Leave open, it's fine. Oh, it's too hot in here, actually. Oh, just turn the heating off. It's too hot in here, too hot in here. Turn the heating up too high. Classic multiplier. Right. Step one.